How do you start a business online? How do you start a small business online? I'm going to give you a different perspective. I've read many books. I've studied business since high school. And I've come to some new conclusions that I'm going to share with you so you can start your small business online in 2015. I'm not going to give you the same advice that I've gotten or things you heard before. Number one thing that I'm going to give you is become comfortable talking to strangers. Yes, I know. I was like, whoa, 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 <laughs> wait, 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 Glennon, wait, wait. I came here for some easy peasy, something really slick, something really fast. I don't have that for you. But I do have advice for you that if you follow my lead, we'll put money in your pocket. Once again, number one thing, become very comfortable speaking to strangers online and in person. There are many people, that's a freak out moment talking to a stranger there are so many wonderful youtube channels and podcasts and facebook groups and blogs that never ever got started because so many people are afraid of talking to strangers or they're afraid of judgment or they're afraid of being criticized i have a friend who would have made amazing videos but when she saw how bad people can be online. She said, nope, not me. I'm not dealing with that. It was done. It was it. It was a wrap. Would have been, um, probably would have made eight figures. That's how bad she is. But she, and she has a business and she does quite well. So she doesn't need the money. So she can make that choice where it's not detrimental. But the thing is, she would have been perfect for it. But because she was so concerned with the negativity that happens online. And if you start a business online, you will deal with negativity. I don't care if you're on eBay, I don't care if you're on Amazon. Matter of fact, there's more <laughs> negativity in those two places than on your own platform. You're gonna have to deal with it. You're just gonna have to deal with it. The second thing that you should do to start your business online is get really, really clear why you are starting a business. The fuel of, I don't want to work for the man, fuck the man, I'm moving on, I want to be, that's great, it's wonderful, but that's like one-fourth a tank of gas. You need a full tank of gas for the journey, or you may have to refuel as you go along. So just because you hate your job, until you get to a point where you absolutely despise your job, where you just said, I can't take it no more, I'm walking out, and really, you shouldn't let it get to that point. At that point, you have a lot of motivation. It could be the job, you may get another job. So you have to be really, really, really clear. Extremely clear. Now, the third thing about starting a business online, you must have realistic expectations to how long it will take you to make money. I'll tell you my journey. I started my online journey here on YouTube with self-publishing, Kindle, and all these other wonderful things, July 17th, 2009. I made my first dollar October 2009. Let's go through that. It's July, August, September, October. That's really quick. Now let's talk about how long it took me to get to a point where I was making enough money to live on. It was 2010. So I started in the middle of the year and went another nine months before it got to decent money. That's relatively fast. That's relatively fast. Now one of the reasons it was fast for me is because I failed a lot. I went ahead way back when I got one of those, I got my lumps, my dues, all that stuff you want to call it. I got that several times over. So if you're brand new and you've never had a business and you've never run anything, expect your learning curve to be damn near vertical. Doesn't mean that you can't do it. Doesn't mean that your business won't be a success. It just means you're going to have to put out a phenomenal, a phenomenal amount of work, maybe maniacal just gonna have to work your ass off seriously and that's one of the things that many people don't understand they feel that if it doesn't happen the first month 
or the first year or the second year that somehow it wasn't destined. I don't believe in karma. I don't believe in destiny. I don't believe in none of those concepts. I do believe in stupid people and I do believe in hard work. Those two things <laughs> can make you a lot of money in life. So you've got to be clear. You have to be realistic and you must be comfortable talking to strangers. I repeat myself because I've been online since 2000 and I know that people don't listen and people do not read. I recently put up a Craigslist ad selling something, everything was detailed, and I had several people ask me the same wrong question because they saw the title and nothing else and went immediately into action mode. Now if you understand how that works, that can make you money. If you don't understand how that works, it will frustrate the shit out of you. People want what they want. And I call it like that Charlie Brown speak. Blah, 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 blah. I, this is what I want. And they hear that and then everything else is just, just like a foreign language. That has not changed online. It has, that's one of the things that is still the same. People, as a matter of fact, it's even worse. So understand that. You're dealing with people who want what they want, which is not bad. They're in a hurry, which isn't bad. And you have to pro pro provide an infrastructure, a platform that serves those needs. Because if you don't, you will not be successful. You will not be successful. I'll give you the experience I had with one client. Great product, great service. Website sucked. And there was a huge, huge problem with the shopping cart. Shopping cart was just, I mean, the, the checkout process was slow and clumsy. I immediately said, look, you need to get rid of that shopping cart. You need to get rid of this process. It was a lot of back-end work for them, but conversions went up 39% the first week after those changes were put in place. Literally, they were bleeding money all over the table because they're shopping. No, seriously, if you don't believe me, look it up. Look at your behavior. Look how you freak out if your browser doesn't load in 0.8 seconds like it used to. If it takes 1.9 seconds versus that 0.8, you're freaking out. You may have computer browser rage. Imagine how you feel if you're trying to spend money and that's happening. You're going to say, oh, well, they don't want my money. I'm out of here. And that's one of the things. You, you have to understand what you're doing. With. You can have a great website. You can have great products. And if your checkout is jacked, you will lose money. You will definitely lose money. And that's a very, very big part of building your business because it's phenomenally hard to get people to your website. That's the biggest problem everyone online has is discoverability. It's not about your product. It's not about your service. It's not about your URL. It's about being discovered. That's why some kid who does something really stupid and gets all of this exposure and gets all of this traffic to their website will make more money on you, more money than you on bullshit because they got discovered. That is your biggest problem, being discovered online. Once you solve that, you open up an automatic fountain of money. Once you discover you 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 hack that problem of being discovered, get your checkout process lean. Now, once again, notice I didn't say anything about you got to have the best ideal. No, you don't. I didn't say anything about you've got to have the best products. Nope, you don't. You have to have be discovered, learn how to talk to strangers, be realistic, have a great checkout process, and that's ninety percent of this. I know, you know, you see all the stuff about funnels and you see about stuff about lead page and conversions and stuff. I made a little change and this is what's really, and it was very counter, uh, counterintuitive to what I was told to do. I made a big change in how I set up one of my web assets and I saw immediate results. So another thing you have to realize, and myself included, you have to do your own work. You can't listen to everybody. You, you have to do your own work. Because when people ask me that magical question, yo, Glendon, I'm broke. What can I do to make some money? I don't know. I don't know you. I have no clue to your responsibilities. I have no clue to your assets. I have no clue to your skill sets. That is a wide, wide open question. Because understand, you're in pain. You're hurting. 
there's bad things going on, you need money, there's no money in your checking account, there's no credit on your credit card, you got bills, you got responsibilities, and you need money now. And I can't help you now. And then just be really, really clear. Let's let's have this realistic, you know, adult to adult conversation. I can't help you now. If your shit is that funky right now, I can only help you in the future. There is no quick magical solution. No. If that's what you're looking, stop the camera, stop the video, go somewhere else. I don't have that for you. But if you want your life to be remarkably different this time next year, continue to listen on. You have to start small. Everyone wants to, you know, build up, break out, boss style. Hire, you know, no, 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 no. Once again, let's go back to what I just said about, I don't know your skill sets. I don't know what your particular talents are. There might be someone who's listening to this who can start a business today, make money by Friday and be off to the races. But that person may have a deep Rolodex or a deep contact base. This person may be extremely well liked by a lot of people and they may already have business experience. If that's not you, you cannot predicate your failure on the hard work of others. You can't do that. People like, oh, well, so-and-so did this. And like, I, I love Warren Buffett. I like Bill Gates, I like Steve Jobs. That was their success. You could pull a few jewels out, maybe five or 10%. The realistically, you're gonna have to do that 90 to 95%. It's on you and your efforts. Now, let's get into the mechanics. Do you need a website to make money online in 2015? No. Real simple. I know I was like, wait, wait, do you need a blog? Nope. You need one or two internet assets. And what I call internet assets, you know, it could be a blog or it, it could be Facebook group, something you control. But you need two of those. You can do Tumblr and make money. You could do Twitter alone and make money. You could do Instagram alone and make money. Now, let's talk about Twitter, Instagram. What drives money there? Demographics. Who's on Twitter? Who is on Instagram? Who's on Tumblr? These are people who are under 30. More times than not. That's who's driving those marketplaces. Your grandmother may be on Facebook and your granddad may be on Twitter, but he's not buying shit off of Twitter. It's the younger people, whether they're buying entertainment type stuff. Now, the biggest demographic that makes money from Twitter, Instagram, Tumblr, Pinterest are women. So if you're selling, you know, bronze, bitch, lip gloss, you may have a win. If you're selling a hair care product, a bronzer, or some kind of eyelashes. You may have a win on Instagram, Pinterest, Tumblr, and um, possibly YouTube. The beauty, makeup, lifestyle, fashion segments are swamped here on YouTube because they make money. But th those are the marketplaces that you don't need a website and you can make money. You just need a way for people to pay you or get sponsorships. But with that said, it's incredibly hard. It's not impossible, it's just tricky. And also you're competing because those type of things are, are sound so good. How do you make money? Oh yeah, you know, I just throw a few things on Twitter and I get paid. And oh yeah, I'm going to the beach. It happens. It's rare, but it happens. So if you are predicating your long-term success on rare events, no wonder that you're frustrated. Now let's talk about making long-term money because the thing is you must have a product or service that people with money will buy. I know it sounds really, really simple. It sounds extremely simple. Yet every day you see people investing millions in products that people don't give a shit about. Don't care, <laughs> don't want, it's, it just sounds like a good idea and it may be, but typically it's not because people have no need nor no desire for a lot of this stuff. Just don't. Now, I'm just kind of giving you some general information here because I'll do something else that very few people online will do. I'm a business consultant. I have products to sell and I want you to buy some and I'll ask you very kindly and gently for your money. So 
if you want to get into super, super detail, because the information I'm giving you, and once again, there are people who will take this information, get started, and make money. For those who need more help, I can help you, but it's going to cost you. Now, that's an adult conversation there. There are many people who have a problem with one adult speaking to another adult and saying, look, I have a progress service and I want you to buy. A lot of people online have that, have a problem with that. Those are mental children. The real world operates on quid pro quo. What the fuck can you do for me? I don't care what anyone says. That's what the world works on. That's what happens in the real world. When I got kicked out of, you know, the normal job situation and I had to start working in the secondary markets. And the, that's how those markets work. And then I, once I got in those markets really, really deep, and then I went back and realized that's how these markets work. When I give, you know, I'll just be straight up. When I give you a free book, I'm giving your email address. Quid pro quo. Uh, that's, that's, that's just reality. And a lot of people get freaked out because many people don't understand how the cycle of life works. Now I'm going to get philosophical on you. That should be Wednesday what I'm going to talk about it right now. The more that you give, and once again, I don't believe in karma. I believe in reaction. Because let's say you, you have a piece of dynamite, right? You have a stick of dynamite and you go up to a building and you just put it anywhere. And it goes off and it puts a hole in the wall, right? Now, say you have specialized knowledge on structure points and you take that same dynamite and you put it in the right places and you set it off, the whole building comes down. Now, when I say I don't believe in karma and I believe in chain reactions, that's what I'm talking about. By putting things in the right structure points, then you get a bigger reaction. Just putting stuff out there you're going to get a reaction, but it may not be what you want. So there's two parts of that. There's having the equipment infrastructure and having the knowledge and knowing where the, how to, to marry the two. It's very, very important when you're putting together your business because I did this for two years. I didn't have a website. Uh, I, I didn't, no, I didn't have a website. I had YouTube and Gumroad and I was able to generate income. So that's why I sell you. You can make money online without a website and once again, if you have vibrant internet assets, vibrant means there are people who go there every week, they're engaged, they talk to you, you get messages. If you just put up a, a podcast or you put up a blog or you put up a YouTube channel and there's a lot of, not a lot of engagement, it's not vibrant. It could be vibrant at some point, but currently it's not vibrant and that's what's killing you. Going back to what was the first thing I told you? becoming comfortable talking to strangers, become comfortable telling strangers the truth. A really nice, or I guess, yeah, he's an internet marketing dude. He reached out to me early when the storage auction thing was going on and he t gave me some advice. And the advice was factual, but morally I didn't like it. It wasn't illegal and his advice was to me was, don't tell people how difficult this is. Don't do it. And it's like, but it is difficult. I had a canoe fall on me. I mean, I'm not going to send people in these storage units and tell them that it's easy when you, the people pack crazy. There's these units are like just the booby traps sometimes. So I told people the truth and people didn't like that because they, you know, some people want, there's, there's two groups of people. There's some people who can deal with reality and there's a group of people who want to live on the fantasy. I prefer to engage with the people who want to deal in reality. If you like fantasies, Maybe this will help you, maybe not. But I'm talking to the people that like to deal with reality. And I told people the truth, and I never never wavered on that. And it came back, and I got a very large consulting deal with a million-dollar company because the guy saw the videos, saw that I told the truth. He thought I was full of bullshit because everyone else was saying it was easy. Two years, and it wasn't instant money. Two years into my journey here on YouTube, the same individual sends me to say, hey, I want to hire you to do X, Y, and Z. I went to some auctions, and it's exactly like you said it was, the good, the bad, and the ugly. I really didn't think you knew what you were talking about. So by being upfront and honest and truthful doesn't mean you're going to get immediate rewards. Sometimes you're going to be hated. You're going to be hated passionately because you have the audacity to shatter illusions, to break people's fantasies up. And people don't like that when they got their fantasy going. They don't like 
someone saying, yo, that's a fantasy. See, the emperor has no clothes on. People don't like that because they've been seduced by fantasies. All of this is part of putting together your business. I know you're looking for mechanics, like get this website, get this plug in. I'm going to tell you something. Without the right business philosophy, it means nothing. You're going to have the best website. You can go out and pay 10 grand for a website. It can be lean, it can load fast, but if you cannot be discovered, it doesn't mean shit. You could go out and hire this production crew, create this badass video, and it's just awesome. But without the right discoverability tools, it means nothing. And this is something I see all day long on YouTube. There are many people who are duplicating the undiscoverable and wondering why they're failing. And that's one of the things that happens. You want to start a business in 2015 online. You've really, really got to do your homework, do your homework, then take the knowledge that you have built or acquired or built up, then go out and exercise that knowledge because there are people what I call uh, fountains of knowledge, read every business book, know all of the top names in any industry, can quote out some of the best internet motivational quotes ever and have never taken that first step to earning that first dollar online. Have never, because see, this is one of the reasons that you need to experiment. Do your homework and experiment, and you're going to find out that some things are not what you thought they were. And the only way that it's going to get in your cortex is the experience of seeing it, feeling it, and tasting it. I can tell you all day long these things that I'm giving you in this video, but until you experience it yourself, your context may not be large enough to absorb it. That's why you got to get started. Let's talk about why you got to get started now. And this is something that's really, really interesting. I looked at starting another podcast because I had one briefly, but I moved away from it. And I really decided to stick with YouTube because I did the, I mean, just hands down, I continue to get benefit. I continue to get a great deal of benefits. So this horse is still winning. I am riding this horse. I have always been that person that has been really about selling up front. I'm not going to tickle you on your back and go, hey, here's a sale. No, I'm just going to like, hey, here's a sale. There's the flag. Go for it. I'm going to do that. Now we're getting to a point where there are many people who are brilliant with their YouTube knowledge. They know how to get more traffic, which is awesome. They know how to build a channel. They know how to optimize it. But selling products directly in video or creating content marketing campaigns that sells products, that's a challenge for many people. And that's going to be a big, big field. Because right now, there are many people who are really not doing it. I know it's like you see all of these ads. They are creating brand awareness. They're letting you know what's going on, but they're not selling to you. This is a whole new thing. And this is another reason that you should start a business online in 2015. You will catch that wave. You will see these things as they developed. You will be privy to certain technologies. Just today, I saw this little microphone. It's an Indiegogo product. It is amazing. It's a little thing, just a little, maybe twice the size of a lapel mic. You just stick it there, remote control, four hours of recording. That is a game changer. That is a game changer, big time. No cables, no inputs. You, you can just literally figure out where to put that thing where it's just barely perceptible, get great audio, and then sync it up later. Or just give you you know some of the applications that I thought you're interviewing two people and you got one camera you used to have to mic up both people have a wireless recorder or maybe a, a wired recorder and you know hook it up later now you can take two of these bad boys film with one camera get great audio do you understand and if you don't do video and it doesn't mean anything to you you're gonna not really get it but if you do audio and you realize, and you do audio and video, and you realize all the possibilities that you now have for this, it's amazing because you can do, and here's another application, you can do 
an aerial shot with a GoPro R and the DSLR have the person mic so you're getting aerial shots and you're getting their voice on the ground. It's, it's kind of surreal. There's so many applications. One of the reasons you have to start a business is once you get in business, you're going to be forced to research things that normally you just wouldn't research. You will be like like this this mic thing. If I was just in my regular walk of life and wasn't doing, I wouldn't give a shit. But since I'm here and I see the application and I'm getting one, I'm like, oh yeah, I'm getting that. I'm getting two, probably three. When you get in business, it forces you to grow up in a business way. It forces you to look at things. It forces you to set up accounts. Uh, someone that gave me a question about how to set up your business accounts. I put that out in Disruptive Money. I put a lot of this stuff out there. And the thing is, and I want you to understand, once you get in business and you start to see the cost in time, the cost in materials, then you are not as cheap as some people are. Some, a business makes some people super cheap because one of the fundamental rules of wealth building is to never lose money. So if you always buy stuff on sale and you never have to pay penalties, you never lose money. So you can always stack. But if you're like losing money and then getting money and losing money, you may literally be treading financial water. That's, yeah, that's one of the fundamental rules of wealth building. Never, ever lose money. That's why you got this guy who's a billionaire and he freaks out over like a $50 interest charge on his credit card. He's like, oh, no, 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 take that shit off. Because it's losing money. It's a mindset. If you never lose money, you're always gaining. But if you lose money, and that's why 401ks are frequently a bad bet because you're losing more money than you're making. Do the math, do the research if you don't believe me. Another reason you should start a business in 2015 and how to start a business in 2015, think about shit that bothers you. If it's bothering you, it's bothering other people. Be open to that. That's how this microphone was developed. Another thing that you have to think about, now that we have the ability to talk to strangers, we have clarity, we have a greater perspective where we know this is not going to happen overnight, and now we're innovative and we're exploring. Now, this is a really critical thing that you should also do when you're building your online business in 2015. Have fun. You have to have fun. I am, once again, I'm not a member of the passion movement. Follow your passion, the money will come. I know personally that it's just not true for a lot of passions. If your passion is taking hot pictures of beautiful women, yeah, there's money in that. If your passion is picking boogers out of your nose, Possibly money in that if you look at booger and pimple videos here on YouTube. If your passion is picking up tin cans, ah, probably not so much money in that. So you got to look at, does your passion induce enough excitement where people who don't give a shit about your passion now will start to have interest? There's ways you can do that. But like what you do, have fun with it. You got to have fun with it. There's three channels, there's three videos per week, sometimes four that come on here. Uh, there's this one, which is be about business. It's supposed to be Monday, sometimes it pops Sunday. Then Tuesday is the story, and then Wednesday's Hustler Mindset Philosophy. I have fun with philosophy, I have fun with stories, and sometimes I have fun with the business side. Because sometimes I have to give you information that is really, it's not that exciting. It, that's a lot of parts about business, they're just not that exciting, but they're necessary. Not exciting, but critically necessary. Critically necessary. And I, you know, I'll give you that stuff like this. Because this is a different how to build a business online in 2015 talk. This is not about go to Amazon. If that's your preference, go for it. If you want to do eBay, that's your preference, go for it. I don't recommend those because they make you lazy. I know if you're doing those things, you're like, Man, I'm working my ass off. What I mean is, you there's certain parts of business lead generation discoverability branding you don't really get to do that on those sites and if you don't believe me everyone that bought something from Amazon recently raise your hand now everyone that remembers the seller that they bought it from keep your hand up most of you your hands went down so 
when you buy something from eBay, you're like, yeah, I got something from eBay, I got something from Amazon. Only then, when shit goes bad, do they remember who you are. And that's what you want to be remembered for. Even if UPS, FedEx, or someone else screwed it up, you will be remembered. They make you lazy. There's just certain parts because I will tell you, if you could do nothing else but become really, really good at getting traffic to websites, that's a job or that's a business. And if you can become really good at getting traffic to websites and having high conversions, you could become a billionaire off that. Yes, if you can get a lot of traffic to websites and you can get high conversions, yeah, billions, billions, if you could do that well, just those two things more so than anything else and that's where you know and that's part of the hats that's one of the things that you're going to have to wear in the beginning since it's just you starting your business unless you start with a partner but just think about some of these things and really really look at you know why you want to start a business and really look at the type of life that you want to have I have an online business and I really don't see myself doing too much in the physical realm anymore because I like the freedom that this provides for me. I work quite a bit, but I choose when I, when I work and I can work anywhere. So if you think about that, if you could trade your 40 hour, get in your car, well, let's say 55 hour, get in your car, go somewhere, then come back home. If you could trade that to where you get to reclaim those hours spent in your car, you still have to put in the same number of hours, but you get your, you don't have that morning commute, which, you know, let's say 15 hours a week, because I did say 55. So you get 15 hours a week back, which is massive. That's 60, yeah, that's, that's 100, wow. That's uh, 30 hours every two weeks. That's 60 hours a month. 720 hours a year that you get back if you could just merely trade what you do for working at home and getting rid of your morning commute. That's massive. That's working out. That's more time with your kids. That's more fucking of your wife. There, I mean, that's, that's just a lot more of what you want to do and you're still working just as hard to make the money. Just something to think about. And if you need any help, this is what you do. Under every video, there's five free books. You can get them. You can pay some money if you want to there. If you want to chip in and donate to the Hustle Mindset Project, you got those. And as you go under there, there's a lot of resources. Now, if you want to work with me one-on-one, -on -one, there's a few projects. There's Project Quest, where you get to ask me 30 questions. I'm going to give you disruptive money, 30 days to 2,500. There's some other stuff. And we're going to talk about it. There's four sessions for that. If you are looking to start a YouTube channel, because we're going to go really, really big with that for a whole month, then there's a course for that. And I'm going to teach you how to start a YouTube channel that makes money. Yes, that makes money. Not for views. And this is, this is a beautiful thing. If you can get enough views, not necessarily millions, but you'll need to be a few thousand, you can make a livable income off that. If you're selling products, if you're just going on that sense, no. So, and if you really want to get into my personal consulting, my personal development program, where we frequently speak, like two, maybe three times a week, then there's a package for that. So, if that's what you want to do, I can make it happen. Everything is below the video. And at least, go ahead to shop.thehustlermindsetproject.com and read a few of the blog stories, the blog posts, because they're very different. This is a very different kind of business blog, way different. You may be shocked, you may be thrilled, but I think you will. One thing you'll never be is bored. And with that, I'll see you in the next session.